Hello, my name is Mrs. Burt and I am the Children and Teen Librarian for Ledger Public Library. I am excited to be here today because Miss Pam has asked me to read you guys a story. I hope you enjoy. Okay, the story I'm going to be reading today is called The Hard Times Jar by Ethel Footman Smothers, pictures by John Holyfield. Emma rolled belly flat, chocolate brown feet stuck up over pots and pans, once upon a time, she scribbled in thick black letters. She dabbed the pencil on her tongue. Emma, Emma Jean, Mama's voice found her on the porch behind the moving in boxes. Emma wiggled her big toe. She needed just one more minute. Emma Jean Turner, Mama yelled, her raised voice squeaking. You keeping an eye on the little ones? Don't let me have to hide that paper and pencil. That was the last thing Emma wanted. The Turners were migrant workers and followed the crops. String beans that hung like long green fingers, tomatoes red and ripe. Money was scarce. Scarcer than hen's teeth, Daddy said. That meant no extras, no store-bought books. Emma had to make her own. She needed her paper and pencil. I know where they are, Emma called before Mama could make good her warning. She did know exactly where they were, but Emma checked the cardboard box just to make double sure. Baby Hannah napped without a wriggle. Robert Earl galloped on his stick pony. Emma leaned on the crook of her arm. Thick black letters formed words on brown paper, words from pictures that floated through her mind like lazy clouds over the apple orchard. Lizzie the lizard had to fan the green pea soup until it got cool she wrote on a piece of grocery bag. It smelled so good, she licked the pot clean, ate the whole thing. Then she got, some, Emma thought for a while, got puke green sick, she said out loud. Robert Earl rode by on his stick pony. I like your stories, he laughed. They sound yucky. Emma smiled. She liked them too. She'd keep them always, forever. Emma fastened the brown pages with safety pins. One day, she'd have a regular book, the store-bought kind. Meantime, Emma hugged the grocery bag book with the stories she'd made up herself. Just then, Hannah blinked wide-eyed. Emma scooped her up, then called for Robert Earl. He was only six. This year, she turned eight, so Mama had put her in charge. Emma led the way around the moving in boxes. She made double sure Robert Earl followed her inside the one-room house that sat at the edge of the apple orchard. Emma saw that Mama had hung quilts separating the sleeping places from the cooking and eating place. She put Hannah down near a sleeping place. You can unpack that box over there. Mama pointed to the cooking and eating place. Everything needs to be put away. Tomorrow is a work day. Tomorrow is apple picking. Emma emptied one box and started the next. Mama's hard times jar lay tucked between blankets. It was just about half full of loose change. Solid nickels, rusty red pennies, thin dimes, and every now and then, a fat quarter. What are we going to do with all this money? Emma knew that before she even asked. She just wanted to make double sure. That money being saved in case we run out of something important before payday, Mama informed her. That's why she call it the hard times jar, cause it's for hard times, Robert Earl said. He was silent for a quick minute, then added, bet I know what Emma would do with all that money. She'd buy her a real book, wouldn't you, Emma? No extras, Mama said, as she went about her busyness. No extras, Robert Earl repeated. No extras, Emma whispered to the hard times jar. The next morning, while darkness still filled the windows, Daddy nudged Emma. Time to roll out with your working clothes on, he whispered. When Emma pushed through the quilt curtain, Mama pointed to the corner. That wash pan over yonder and your plate waiting. Emma dabbed the washcloth over her face and passed it on. Here, Robert E., wash. Roll out with your working clothes on, Robert said, waving the cloth at Hannah. Robert Earl, don't bother with Hannah. Wash. Mama's head was already wrapped for work. Emma, eat and we'll leave for the orchard. 
We taking red beans and rice for lunch? Emma asked, her words full of cornbread. Red beans and rice, said Mama. Everybody ready? Apple picking time, said Daddy, grabbing the box of food. Before sunshine spread through the trees, Daddy laid his extra long ladder in their branches. All the way to the top he climbed, picking high above Emma's head. Mama seated Hannah in an empty crate. She pulled apples that hung down low. Apple picking time, she said, turning to Emma. Emma had already picked herself one. It tasted of morning, cool and crisp. Emma licked the sweetness dripping down her chin. Robert Earl gathered red fruit off the ground. Some of these all gushy, he said with a mouthful of apple. Pick only the good drops from under the tree, Daddy told him. Daddy's large sack quickly bulged running over full. He released the strap and round red mist brushed into crates with loud thuds. The sound of spilling apples gave Emma another idea. She needed one minute. Lizzie tumbled over and over, stomach hard as bricks. Emma pulled out a piece of brown paper and scribbled. Emma, Emma Jean, Mama called from between branches. Do you want me to hide that pencil? That was the last thing Emma wanted. She slid the pencil and paper back into her pocket. She piled apples high in the crate. She'd work plenty to add money to the hard times jar. That way, there'd be some leftover for extras. That way, she'd get a store-bought book. Sometime after the sun climbed over the tip of Daddy's ladder, Mama passed red beans and rice. Emma set her tin plate down and scribbled. All the other lizards around Lizzie, they got pukey green sick too. She wrote in between mouthfuls, and that's why lizards are green instead of brown. Emma dabbed the pencil on her tongue. The end, she finished. Emma turned the paper over. She planned on making up another story right then, but Daddy called that it was time for work again. One evening, when the trees in the orchard grew thin shadows, Mama sat Emma down. Emma Jean, she began, tomorrow you won't be picking apples. I won't? Emma's eyes filled with tears. How could she add money to the hard times jar? How could she ever earn enough for extras if she didn't go to the orchard? I have to, Emma cried. I'm sorry, Mama told her, but you'll be going to school. School? Emma frowned. I never went to school before when we came up on the season. That's what some folks called coming up north to work the crops. Why, why can't we just, uh, why can't I go just wait till we go back to Florida, please, Emma begged. I know how you feel, but you're eight now. You shouldn't be missing any school, Mama said, hugging Emma's shoulders. The very next morning, Emma stood at the end of the dirt road. Her stomach felt all squiggly. You'll be fine, Mama told her as the bus drove up. But she didn't feel fine. She wished she was back at the orchard as the bus stopped in front of the red brick school. You must be Emma, a lady said, meeting her at the door. Yes, ma'am, Emma nodded. I'm Miss Miller, the third grade teacher, she said, her lips curving into a smile. Emma looked down and watched her foot move back and forth. She didn't like being eight anymore, and she didn't like Pennsylvania either. You'll like my classroom, Miss Miller assured her. We have lots of girls and boys your age. Miss Miller's face reminded Emma of buttermilk, all creamy and white. Come along, she took Emma's hand. Let's go in. Emma walked into the third grade room. There were lots of boys and girls, just like Miss Miller had said, but none were chocolate brown like her. They all looked like Miss Miller. Emma's stomach felt squiggly. She had never gone to school with people Miss Miller's color. Down south, it was not allowed. Down south, it was against the law. Emma, Miss Miller said, let me show you around. Miss Miller led the way. Her hair was rolled at the back like a thick donut. This is our coat room, she told Emma. And this, she pulled back a curtain to another room, is our library. Emma's eyes grew larger than quarters. Books, walls, and walls of books. From the floor, halfway to the ceiling, books, the store-bought kind. You may read any of these books, Miss Miller told her. None can be taken home, she cautioned, but you are free to read as much as you want during activity period. Honest? Emma asked. Honest, Miss Miller promised. 
And that afternoon when Miss Miller announced activity period, she told the class that they could work on arts and crafts or choose books from the library. Every day, Emma chose books. She squeezed them and hugged them. She carried them to a chair away in the corner. I love you, she whispered, breathing in the smell of them. From then on, Miss Miller would say, why, Emma, I can hardly tell where that stack of book ends and you begin. On Friday, Miss Miller stood in front of the blackboard. She faced the class. Make sure you take your sweaters and jackets home and remember to return all books to the library before you go. Have a nice weekend. Emma was the last one in the coat room. She hugged the two books still in her hands. She was going to put them back on the shelf after she got her sweater. Instead, she slipped them between the folds of her sweater. I'll just borrow them, she told herself. She was positive no one would miss them. At home, Emma snuggled into a corner. She held the books on her lap, all two of them. The covers were slick and shiny. One had a picture of a golden carriage shaped like a big pumpkin. Emma ran her fingers over its smooth pages. She imagined how grand it would be to ride in such a fine carriage. The other one showed two mice in fancy dresses. Each carried an umbrella. Emma could hardly wait to find out what the, where they were going. That night, she read beneath her sleeping cot. Her fingers followed every word. Letters stretched across the page like blackbirds seated neatly in a row. On Sunday, Mama pulled two books from under Emma's cot. Emma, Emma Jean, what are these books doing here? I thought they were not supposed to leave the school. Emma watched her foot move back and forth. I only meant to borrow them for a little while. They have plenty more at school. Emma let out a long sigh. I don't have any store-bought books. It makes no difference, Mama said. These books don't belong to you. Mama turned Emma's face to hers. What must you do? Put them back on the shelf, Emma said softly. And you must tell Miss Miller what you've done. Emma had those squiggles again. This time they made her heart leap right up to the edge of her skin. Do I have to? Yes, you do, Mama said. Monday morning, Emma missed recess. She stood in front of Miss Miller's desk. Her stomach had the squiggles. I took these book home, books home from the library. Emma looked down at the floor. I'm sorry, she said. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. Honest. Of course you didn't, Miss Miller said, smiling. And I know you'll never take them again. Never, ever, Emma promised. That evening, Mama sat Emma down. I am proud of you for owning up to what you did, she said. That must have been hard. The hardest, Emma told her. Mama unscrewed the hard times jar and placed six shiny quarters in Emma's hand. From the hard times jar, Emma asked. That's what the hard times jar is for. For hard times, Mama said. Robert Earl smiled. Bet I know what Emma's going to do with all that money. Emma squeezed her quarters. She knew and they would be the store-bought kind. The end. I hope you guys enjoyed the story, and if you ever need any more books, be sure to stop by either Ledger Library, the Bill Library in Ledger, or Gales Ferry Library in Gales Ferry. Thanks. Enjoy the rest of your program.